BP, the, one of the largest companies in the UK at the moment. We're seeing some major shakeup at the helm of that. Bernard Looney leaving the company. We're going to get a little bit more insight right now. And that's going to be, again, significant when it comes to the broader strategy. Who better to walk us through it than Will Kennedy, our managing editor of Oil and Commodities. Let's start with that story. How does this change the strategy, Will? Well, we don't know yet. This uh, resignation was a surprise, and it didn't reflect at the moment any unhappiness with uh, Bernard's uh, business performance, but clearly he has uh, run foul of uh, some relationships he had with colleagues. Importantly, it turned out that he had misled the board, and I think no CEO can continue once the board uh, feels that they've been uh, misled, and that's what happened here, so he's resigned with immediate effect. It is a bit of a shock. Uh, the CFO, Mario Okinlos, um, uh, will take over in the interim, but we don't know who's going to take over in the long term, and until we do, we don't know whether this means a change of strategy. Does that actually have a reflection on how well BP has perhaps competed with some of its oil major partners in, in the U.S. as well? I mean, talk to us a little bit about Bernard Looney's tenure here. Yes, I mean, it has been, uh, it's been an interesting one. He took over uh, and set a very uh, radical change, pledging to reach uh, net zero uh, by 2050, pledging to cut oil production quite quickly and invest in new energy businesses. Uh, there was a lot of investor doubt about that strategy, uh, and, uh, strat and a lot of investors said, no, actually, we just want you to continue making money from oil and gas and giving that to shareholders. And it's been a big debate in the industry over the last few years. We've seen similar debate at Shell, where the new CEO has trimmed that strategy. But in more recently, I think uh, people have been quite supportive of Looney's uh, performance. He did row back some of those more aggressive targets a little bit. Clearly, the company made an awful lot of money after oil and, price, oil and gas prices spiked following the invasion of Ukraine. Um, and he seemed to be in a fairly good place and people seem to be okay with his strategy. So it had been rocky, there had been ups and downs, but I don't think there was any sense that his immediate future was in, in jeopardy. As I say, this is a, a big surprise that's related to his personal behaviour. Talk to us about who takes over in the interim. While we figure all of this out, what do we know about the interim CEO? Well. BP uh, tends to appoint its CEOs internally, and its interim CEO is a is a company man, the current CFO, uh, obviously the most senior executive after Looney in the company. Uh, we don't know if he's in prime position to, to take over. He's obviously will be a candidate. Uh, one thing to point out is that the board is led by Helga Lund, who is himself a very uh, successful oil and gas CEO. He was uh, has both run uh, Equinor, the Norwegian oil and gas company and BG, which was then taken over uh, by Shell. He hasn't put himself forward, so I don't think we'll, he'll be a candidate. He would have been a very strong candidate, but I think that might have happened now if that was going to happen. But he is probably in a good position to look for candidates. And given how quickly this move has happened, it is possible that CEO, uh, the search might include external candidates.